Hi, good day. Welcome to the Military Tools for ArcGIS Military S Symbols webinar. I'm Fred Woods, Industry Marketing Specialist at Esri. Your presenters today are Daniel Barnes and Matt Funk. Today you will learn how to use military tools to create, edit, and publish military overlays, such as Order of Battle, using MIL standard 2525 symbols. For the webinar, you are all on mute. However, you'll see a question window. Please type questions there and we will review them at the end of the presentation. At the end of the webinar, there will be a survey. Please complete the questions so we may produce quality webinars. This webinar is being recorded and, we'll be, and we will post it on the page you registered at. Now I'll turn it over to Daniel and Matt. Thank you for attending. Thanks, Fred. So today, we'll talk about the Military Symbol Editor, a component of Military Tools for ArcGIS. My name is Dan Barnes, and with me is my colleague, Matt Funk. We're both product engineers on the Defense Solutions team, based here in Redlands, California. Now, before I dive into the Military Symbol Editor, I'd like to briefly introduce what we do on the Defense Solutions team. We support the defense, intelligence, and national security industry by building configurable maps and apps that are built on top of the ArcGIS platform. Our goal is to get you up and running with ArcGIS, regardless of your skill level. Our solutions are fully documented on the solutions website and maintained. They're also fully supported and they're open source, which means you can access them on GitHub. Our mission is to develop solutions to your problems and map and app templates to jumpstart your workflows. We've long supported the geospatial analyst within the defense and intelligence community. But as we continue to expand and grow our offerings, and as the ArcGIS platform evolves, we want to reach out to more users and create holistic workflows for the entire industry. So what is military tools for ArcGIS? They are essential, supported, open source tools that were built to reduce the complexity, cost, and ultimately the time it takes to create these common defense and intelligence geospatial products. We took significant user feedback in building these tools and also focused in on key gaps in the platform. We also looked at some of the newer technology that was coming out with ArcGIS. For example, using a new symbol renderer for military symbology and looking at 3D ways to visualize visibility in ArcGIS Pro. Military tools consist of four key components. We have coordinate conversion for converting a variety of coordinate notation formats. We have distance and direction for drawing graphics on the map, such as range rings, ellipses, circles, and lines. We have the visibility tool, where you bring your own elevation data and you can conduct linear and radial line of sight and have that symbolized on the map. And today, we'll be talking about the Military Symbol Editor, which is the place where you can create and curate your military standard symbols in ArcGIS Pro. Military Tools for ArcGIS at release 1.0 and 1.1 is available in ArcMap 10.3.1 through 10.5 and ArcGIS Pro 1.4 and 1.4.1, and that's for the desktop user. In the web, they're available as Web App Builder Developer Edition widgets for 2.2 through 2.4. Esri has been supporting military symbology for quite some time now. Some of you may remember the Military Overlay Editor, or MOL, which was built as an extension to ArcMap. More recently, we've come out with a defense solutions template called Military Features, which supports ArcMap. More recently still, We've been working on the Military Symbol Editor and its associated solution templates that all work with ArcGIS Pro. We currently support MIL standard 2525 Bravo Change 2 and 2525 Delta. Some of our international users may be wondering about our support for APP6. APP6B does have some NATO classification markings. As we can provide support, but you'll have to ask NATO to get permission to work on that first. APP6D, however, once it is ratified, will no longer have those classification markings. And as a result, you will be able to, uh, or Esri will be able to implement that without any special permission. So the military symbol editor is built so that you can get up and running with a new pro project, add the military symbol editor, 
and start with new military symbols to create overlays. You can create the military symbols and also customize them with symbol and label components. The way I like to think about them is that these military symbols are sort of building blocks where you have a core icon and then you have modifiers, amplifiers, and text components. You can add the symbols to your map and build your overlay. You can also curate your list of symbols using the favorites tab, which we'll demonstrate later. But before you start adding symbols to the map, you'll have to make a couple of decisions when you're setting up the symbol editor in ArcGIS Pro. First, you'll have to choose which standard you want to work with. You can work with MIL standard 2525D or Bravo Change 2. You can choose this by clicking on the settings button at the bottom of the military symbol editor pane. Once you do this, you can navigate to the search tab where you can search by keyword or a portion of a symbol identification code for a particular symbol. On my screen, in the screenshot I searched for any symbol that had the keyword armor. Within the results, you can select a particular symbol. When you do this for the first time, you'll get a warning saying that the add-in is disabled. In order to enable the add-in, you'll have to add a military overlay layer package, uh, which will add a schema to your project. These schemas are associated with the standard that you're working with, and the schema includes all the attribute fields that will end up driving the symbology. These symbols are built with multi-layers, and the multiple layers are associated with individual fields in this schema. So when you click yes, you'll be able to add either the 2525B or D uh, military overlay schema to your project. And when you do that, the add-in will be enabled and you can begin to add symbols to your map and customize them. And when I say customizing them, I'm talking about specifying a variety of symbol and label components and then adding them to the map so that you're conveying exactly what you want within your overlay. So once you search for a symbol, you can move forward to the symbol tab, where, for example, you can add things like an echelon, a headquarters staff, uh, edit the identity or affiliation, uh, and things like that. As you edit your symbol and customize it, you will see the preview will update uh, just below the various dropdowns. Once you're ready to move forward, you can add a variety of label components. You can see on the screenshot that I added a unique designation, staff comments, and also a location for additional information. This won't preview in the symbol editor pane itself, but once you add it to the map, you will see the labels uh, appear in their locations relative to the core icon. I'd like to highlight a couple of other things that you can do with the military symbol editor. You can add the symbols to the map using the map point tool, but you can also add them to the map at specific coordinate locations. We took the same code that we used for the coordinate conversion tool to enable you to enter a specific coordinate, regardless of what coordinate notation format that's in. Click the mark pan to coordinate button, which will give you a preview of where that symbol will be located. And then when you're satisfied with that location, you can click add coordinates to map, and the symbol will be added at that specific location. You can also modify symbols that are already on the map using the modify tab. We've embedded the select tool where you can select a variety of symbols and then choose which symbol you want to edit. You can then go into the workflow that I showed where you can customize the symbol and label components and from there click the save edits button to commit your changes. Finally, you can curate your symbols with favorites which we'll demonstrate later. But basically you can see that if you have a variety of symbols that you want to use frequently, you can save them in a favorites list that you can access at any point within the editing workflow. So what happens once you've already created your overlay in ArcGIS Pro using the Military Symbol Editor and you want to share it with other people in your organization? You can publish your overlay as a map or tile service so people can view them in the web. If you're sharing the portal for ArcGIS, you can share it as a map image service, and if you're sharing to ArcGIS online, you can share it out as a tile service. However, the workflow that I think is most impactful is using the military overlay template to actually share your overlay as editable features using data hosted in an enterprise geodatabase. 
This will enable other people in your organization that have access to the layers you share to edit and update those features as the situation in the real world or your battle plans are changing. All you have to do is make sure that your data is hosted in an enterprise geodatabase and that you're sharing your web layer as both a feature service and a map image service. And I'll demonstrate this later. But for now, I'm going to hand it over to Matt, who will demonstrate how you can get started with the Military Symbol Editor in ArcGIS Pro. So let's start using Military Symbol Editor in ArcGIS Pro. And we will walk through some of the workflows that Dan has outlined. We're going to do this like we are creating a military operation plan using military symbols. For the webinar, we're going to assume that you've already installed the military tools add-in. But if you don't have it yet, you can get it from the Esri Solutions website. You go to solutions.arcgis.com slash defense slash help slash military dash tools or go to solutions.arcgis.com and search for military tools. It will take you to the Military Tools for ArcGIS Overview page, where you can download all the components that make up the Military Tools add-ins. This web page also has all of the documentation outlining the workflows. If you go to the ArcGIS Pro tab, you'll find them under Military Symbology. So let's go ahead and get started using uh, ArcGIS Pro to build a military plan using military symbols. So let's start ArcGIS Pro. And in this case for the webinar today, I'm using version 1.4.1. As soon as it starts, I'll create a brand new map project and use the default project name. And we'll get started. So because I've already installed the Military Tools add-in, I've got the Military Tools ribbon at the top of my project. Now if I click on that ribbon, I can see all the components that make up the military tools, including the coordinate conversion, distance direction, visibility, and of course, military symbol editor. I start military symbol editor. I've got all the tabs that we'll walk through today and the work area for each tab. But because this is the first time I'm using military symbol editor, I've got to decide on which symbol standard I'd like to use. I do that by going to Settings at the bottom of the pane. And in the pop-up window, I choose Military Standard 2525D or Standard 2525B Change 2. The default is 2525D, and this is a good place to start if you're not familiar with either standard. If you want to switch between the two, it's best to do that by starting a brand new project and selecting that at the beginning. Let's go ahead and use 2525D, and we'll say OK. Now, the next step in starting with Military Symbol Editor is to enable the add-in and add the military overlay schema to our project. And we're going to do that. Uh, we'll actually do two things at the same time. We're going to enable that and search for our very first symbol. So we go to the Search tab, and I want to find a mechanized infantry symbol. search for mechanized infantry, hit return, and I get four results. Now, as soon as I click on my very first symbol, I get a pop-up telling me that I have to add the military overlay schema to my project and enable the add-in. The schema is basically the features and attributes that drive and store the symbology for our project. And once that's loaded, we'll take a look at what that looks like. So if I switch over to my contents pane, I can see all of the military overlay features added for the different components, uh, units, equipment, and different control measures. These are basically the schema and the attributes that are driving our symbology. And the military symbol editor is a really nice, easy, convenient way to fill those in. So let's continue. Back on the military symbol editor, I search for mechanized infantry and I've got four results. As soon as I clicked on the first one, I get a preview of what that symbol looks like, including the icon and the frame reference and the different tags that are used to 
identify and categorize what symbol I'm using. I've only got a few here, but this kind of highlights that you can get multiple returns for any keyword. So it's best to kind of click through and see exactly what you're getting to make sure you've got the right symbol. So the one I want is a friendly mechanized infantry. It's outlined by the blue frame. So the next step, I've got my base symbol. Uh, the next thing I want to do is add my graphic modifiers. So I go to the bottom and select the forward button. And I can start adding graphic modifiers, such as the status. If this was an installation, I could choose headquarters staff or task force modifiers. I can modify the size of this unit by selecting an echelon and other kind of modifiers such as capability or mobility. Notice that as I've selected each of these graphic modifiers, the preview window updates to show me what that symbol is going to look like. Further down under symbol attributes, I can expand the display attributes and look at the actual attributes that are going to be added to the schema once I add this symbol to my map. After I've modified the graphics, I will go ahead and hit the forward button again and start adding text modifiers. This will be uh, date time valid, expired, which would be a start time or end time. Uh, if I'm using this in a Blue Force tracking application, I could modify speed. I could also give it a unique designation, which is basically just the name of the unit. And I can also add other text modifiers such as comments or higher formation, the parent unit. Notice that as I add the text modifiers, they aren't actually updating the preview window. That's okay. They'll be added. We'll see those once we start adding the symbols to the map. Down below under label attributes, I can see how the uh, text changes above are reflected in my schema. Here's the unique designation name that I've added. So I've got my base symbol, I've added my graphic modifiers, I've added my text modifiers. The next step is to actually place it on the map. We'll do that, hitting forward button one more time. And by now, let's actually move into the area of interest in my map, approximately where I want this symbol to go, and begin building my plan. All right. So let's use some coordinates to add this to the map. I've got a report that's got an MGRS string that I'd like to use to place this unit. Notice I've pulled in MGRS. I could use US National Grid or uh, UTM or different flavors of latitude longitude. Because of the coordinate conversion capability included with Military Symbol Editor, we can use those strings, those coordinate notations, and it will understand exactly what those mean. So I want to check that location. I can use the pan or mark to coordinate button. And it basically pans my view to that location and adds a red dot. So if I want to move it or modify it or just check that location, this is a great way to do that. Once I'm satisfied with where that's supposed to be go, I'll click Add Coordinates to Map. And here's our first symbol with all the graphic modifiers and text modifiers included with it. So let's go back and add a few more symbols. Back on the search window, let's go and search for an infantry symbol and see what we get. This time we get uh, many more results. In fact, we've got 24 to look through. And this kind of highlights why it's important to look through the list, highlight them, look at the previews and the tags, and make sure you're getting the correct symbol. In this case, I want a basic infantry symbol. There's my frame and my icon. So let's go to the symbol tab and add our graphic modifiers. Add our status and echelon and any other modifiers. And move on to the label tab where we'll add our text modifiers. We'll give this unit a name. And this time, instead of using coordinates to add it to the map, I'm going to use the Add to Map tool which allows me to just graphically, interactively place it on the map. And once again, we've got our symbol with the base icon, the frame, the graphic modifiers, and text modifiers. Let's add another one simply by changing the name. And 
add that one to the map. And we've got a third symbol. Let's add one more. In this case, let's add a hostile infantry symbol as well. Add its modifiers. Add its text modifiers. And add this to the map as well. So far, we've pretty much only added force elements which represent different order of battle pieces, units, equipment, or installations. And these kind of represent the who and what of a plan. But we can also draw tactical graphics, which represent graphic control measures and mission graphics. And these would represent the how of a mission plan. So let's add some control measures to our map. And we'll use the same fashion as we did for the units. So we go back to the search window. And let's add an axis of advance arrow by searching on axis and return. And here I get 37 results. Again, highlighting why it's important to go through and check the preview and make sure you're getting the right symbol. Here's my axis of advance. And we'll add graphic modifiers just as we did with the unit symbols. And labels. And add that to the map. So this is basically giving a direction to our plan. And again, gives us the text modifiers as part of that symbol. Let's give a timing element to this advancement and look for some phase lines to add. Search on phase, and again, fewer symbols, but still important to check and make sure I've got the right one. We'll just add these along the line, perpendicular. OK, so these are some linear graphic uh, tactical graphics. Let's add a checkpoint to represent a, a point tactical graphic. So I'll search on checkpoint, select the symbol I'd like to use. Again, I can give it graphic modifiers and text modifiers and add it to my map, let's say right before I enter the city. Let's add one more. Let's add an area graphic symbol or tactical graphic. And look for an engagement area symbol. And again, looking through the list, finding the one I'd like. Here we go. Notice for this one, with the area symbols, sometimes they show up as a black square. That's correct. It's not missing the symbol. That's what that will actually look like. So let's go ahead and give that a name as well. And add it to the map. So we've got kind of the basics, the beginnings of a very simple basic plan that shows, uh, highlights some of this, the elements that you can add using the military symbol editor. Now as I was going through this, I could have been hitting the add to favorites button. And what this does is allows me to make a list of my most commonly or my favorite used symbols. As you can see, I've already got a few in here. And as I select one of them, I get all the tags that were used to build it, a preview of what that symbol looks like. And under symbol attributes, I can see the graphic modifiers and text modifiers that were used to create this symbol. Now you can imagine if I've been doing this for quite a while and building up my plans for quite a bit, I've got a pretty big list. And I can filter that by going to the top and typing in my keywords. If I look for anything infantry related, it filters that list pretty nicely. Or I could search for my engagement area symbols. I don't even have to put in the full text. It will still pull out and do a quick search on what I've got, whatever I use. 
So that makes it nice and easy to look through my list and filter down and see exactly what I want out of my favorites. Another important feature of the favorites list is the ability to save that as that favorites list as a JSON file. So I click on Save As and save that to a file. And that'll actually export all of my symbol definitions to a JSON file. This isn't normally something you'd take a look at, but just so you have an idea of what it's storing in this JSON file. Each of the symbols is categorized with its different graphic modifiers, such as the echelon size, in this case it was platoon, the label attributes, which are pretty much the text modifiers, like the unique designation or the unit's name, and all of the tags and the standard that were used to create the frame, the basis of that symbol. So what's the use of exporting this? Well, if I have multiple people in my shop, I can take this, my favorite symbols, build up my most regularly used set of symbols, and share them. So Dan, why don't we show them how that works? Thanks, Matt. So as Matt has been building his overlay, I have been working on mine as well. And in ArcGIS Pro, I have one that is already fairly built out. But if I go over to the left-hand side of my screen in the Military Symbol Editor, I don't have any favorites yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the Import button and then Import Matt's JSON file that he just saved out. And when I do that, I can scroll through and see that the favorites that Matt was working with are now in my instance of ArcGIS Pro. I can select one of the symbols, view the tags, symbol preview, and the attributes, and then at the bottom of the pane, click the forward button, which will take me back into the customization workflow, starting with the symbol tab. I can add a headquarters staff, and I can also change the echelon from squad to platoon and change the modifier from ranger to topographic. Under units, you can see that there's a lot of options for modifier one and modifier two. Something else I'd like to showcase is that you can right click on the image preview in any of these tabs and actually save it out as a PNG if you need to use it in any presentation or just as a standalone image. I'll move forward once more and add some staff comments. From here, I'll click the Add to Map button and add the symbol to my map at the top of my screen. So now what I want to do is actually edit some of, the, uh, some of the components of these symbols using the Modify tab. So I'll navigate to the Modify tab in the Military Symbol Editor. And what I like about the Modify tab is it actually embeds the Select tool right in the Symbol Editor. So you don't have to understand the whole concept of selecting features and editing them. Uh, in ArcGIS Pro, you just have to know that you can click this button in the symbol editor and then select a couple of symbols. And when I select these two symbols, I can scroll through my results and pick the symbol that I want to edit. So I'll click on this symbol here and click the forward button. And from here, I can edit some of these symbol components. I'll change it from friend to hostile and I'll just remove the, uh, the headquarters. Clicking the Save Edits button at the bottom of the tab will showcase the changes that I just committed. So now it is a red hostile symbol. So this is useful if you receive a pro project package from someone else who has an overlay already and you want to make updates or changes within ArcGIS Pro. At this point, I think we're ready to talk about sharing these overlays out with other people in your organization. And the workflow that I'm going to focus on is using data that's hosted in an enterprise view database to share out into portal uh, editable feature services. This way, people will be able to edit and update the overlays in the web as the situation changes in the real world. The way to do this is by going to the share ribbon and clicking on share as web layer. But what we've actually done is built out a task that helps step you through this workflow. So in the project pane, I have this uh, task here called MIL standard 2525D. 
And if I double click on it, uh, you'll see that there's a variety of things that I can do with this task. There's the bit on storing file or enterprise geodatabase data and migrating your data between the two. But I'll focus on the last one under create and share an overlay and then clicking on this task here, sharing an overlay as a web layer. It's important to remember to connect to your instance of portal for ArcGIS. But the next step will automatically open up the share as web layer pane for me. And in the instructions, it includes uh, the checks that you should make to ensure that your overlay will be published correctly and will be editable once it's in the web. So like I mentioned, you have to make sure you're referencing registered data. That would be enterprise data that other people can access. And then clicking on feature and map image. Now feature layers will enable the editable functionality in the web. And the map image layer is what's going to apply the symbology. So these two layers, when you add them to a web map, will work together to enable this functionality. Additionally, I know some people want to use WMS layers. Under the configuration tab within the share as web layer pane, you can check this on. So what does it look like when I open it up in a browser uh, in, in my instance of portal for ArcGIS? You can see here that I have a similar overlay that I have shared earlier, and you can look at the contents, and it's the same schema organized into the same group layers, but now it's been published out into the web. If I move from details over to edit, you'll see that there's a variety of feature templates that appear on the left side of the page under add features. These feature templates can be customized in ArcGIS Pro uh, and as of the release of Military Tools 2.0 in a couple of weeks, the favorites that you save in the Military Symbol Editor can be exported to your feature templates. So there will be a workflow to go from favorites out to feature templates and then you can publish those and view those in the web. So I'll go ahead and add a feature units and I'll add it up to the top left corner of the map. You can see when I add it, it's making a change on the feature service side so the symbology hasn't been applied yet. But the pop-up includes all of the attributes which are the drop-downs that enable you to customize the appearance of the symbol which is very similar to how the military symbol editor operates in ArcGIS Pro. So for example, uh, the affiliation can be friendly, but then under extended function code, which is really the, the core symbol entity, you can edit, uh, you, you can make this any of the unit symbols that exist in the 2525 uh, dictionary, which are a lot of different types of symbols. So I'll just make it a anti-tank, anti-armor symbol. And what you can do is just click away from the pop-up and the symbology will be applied. You can also edit existing symbols on the map by clicking on them and the same pop-ups will appear. All of these drop-downs are editable and I can set a specific echelon or mobility and I can also add a text modifier like unique designation. And when this, when I click away from here, you'll see that the symbol will update again with the echelon and alpha as the name of the symbol. You can also make edits to the line and area symbols as well. But what I'll showcase is sharing out your overlay into a web application. And I just want to showcase this because what you can do is once you create these feature services and save the web maps, you can ingest these web maps in web applications, whether they are for briefing purposes, telling a story, or for more editing and more, more collaboration in the web. And what you'll see here is as I'm loading this basic viewer web application, it's just a proof of concept that once you share these services out, you can enable the military symbology to display across web apps and across other web-enabled components of the ArcGIS platform, like dashboards and things like that. So with that, I'll go back into ArcGIS Pro to explain some of the alternative workflows that we have uh, that have come up for military symbology. So I have a second map in my ArcGIS Pro project here. And if I go to the contents pane, which is on the left here, I have this military units table feature class. I'm going to open up the attribute table. And when I open up the attribute table, 
you'll see that I have one field that is named SIDC. This stands for Symbol Identification Code. Within the Military Symbol Editor, we've hidden these symbol identification codes in the domains view of, of the schema. So you don't necessarily have to worry about understanding or memorizing all of the codes for all of the symbols or referencing back to the standard. But if you have your own data that already has these symbol identification codes, if you already know what you want to see on the map, you can, in, you can bring that into Pro and then with a couple of steps, render the proper symbology. And in order to do that, all you have to do is go to the symbology pane. And I'll dock it on the side here. And with the symbology pane, just change the renderer, which is the default single symbol. Those are simple points, lines or polygons. And then change it to dictionary. And you'll see that on the map, the symbology has changed. And now it's represented uh, with, these, with these various 2525 Bravo change to unit symbols. So all you have to do when you change it to dictionaries is just do a check, make sure that you're working with the standard you want. So these are military uh, 2525 B change to symbol identification codes. And then in the symbology fields, this is where the attribute table that you have matches up with the fields that we've built into ArcGIS Pro in these symbol dictionaries. So SIDC is a, is a field specifically for these 15 character symbol identification codes. You can see it's matched up to, it's automatically matched up uh, because it has the same name to this SIDC layer in my attribute table for this feature class. So if you want to bring in your own data with a list of SIDC codes and apply the symbology, you can do that just by going to the symbology pane in ArcGIS Pro. The last thing I'll showcase is the ability to render military symbology in a 3D scene. Now, military symbols, uh, there's, there's, there hasn't been a real standardized way that's been laid out of how to render the symbology in 3D. But ESRI and the symbology standards community have been working on a path forward for how you, uh, how, what the best practices are for rendering these symbols. Uh, and it's important because ArcGIS Pro really takes advantage of the concept of converting dynamically between 2D maps and 3D scenes. All I've done here is set some extrusion or added some, some specific Z values for height uh, that gives the, uh, gives the view some depth, and then also I've set some transparency for the control measure lines and areas. So this is sort of a road ahead, uh, thinking about in the future how we're going to implement more and more of these overlays in a 3D space. And with that, I will go back to our slides and talk about the road ahead for military tools for ArcGIS. So our first release, 1.0, was back in January of this year. More recently, uh, a couple weeks ago, we released military tools for ArcGIS 1.1. It focuses on the same versions of the software. However, we included a, uh, several bug fixes and some stabilization. And uh, our most significant enhancement was the inclusion of batch coordinate conversion in the coordinate conversion tool, or the ability to bring in a list of coordinates and have that coordinate notation format be converted for all of those coordinates at once. In a couple of weeks, we are looking forward to the release of military tools for ArcGIS 2.0. And with 2.0, that will be compatible with Pro 2.0, ArcGIS Pro 2.0, and ArcMap 10.5.1. So military tools is advancing as new versions of the desktop software are being released. Like I said before, the military symbol editor favorites to feature templates workflow is something that uh, we're looking forward to with this. Uh, and then further on into 2018, we're thinking about incorporating some completely new functionality or new components into the Military Tools for ArcGIS product. We have something called the GRG widget uh, that's been released as a defense solutions offering. It stands for gridded reference graphic. It enables you to create grids for search uh, operations uh, in the web and web applications. And that will be rolled into the military tools for ArcGIS offering at some point in the future. And with the, the, uh, the military tools for webinar series, this is the last one. You can access all of the recorded webinars with the URL uh, at the bottom of the screen here. And with that, 
I will hand it back to Fred and we'll go over any questions you guys might have about the military symbol editor or military tools as a whole. Thank you. That was great, Dan and Matt. Thank you very much for your exciting uh, presentation and demonstrations there. We do have a few questions here. Uh, the first one is, is when uh, will Military Symbol Editor be available in Web Application Builder as a widget? Thanks for the question. Um, that's something that we have been thinking about and we are working with, with Core to get client-side symbol, symbol authoring with this renderer. Um, but for now, we don't have a specific date for that, but for now, the best workflow for authoring these symbols is to publish the schema uh, of the military overlay that we showed as an, as a uh, in an enterprise geodatabase and then you'll be able to edit and update and create more of the symbols in the web. Then I have here, uh, do you plan to support military symbol callouts where multiple units are shown in detail when zoomed in and aggregated when zoomed out? Same as shown in the slide about mole, military overlay editor. You're like a leader for them. Yeah, yeah, leadering and stacking and these callouts, those, those are all things that have, the need for that has not gone away. Uh, and that's something that we have on our roadmap as well. But unfortunately, no, no specific date for those enhancements. But that will be, once the military symbol editor becomes more, more mature, some of those use cases will be supported. Next up, uh, status for APP6B slash D support. Yeah, so, so like I mentioned, with APP6B, uh, it's, it, the, the standard itself is marked NATO unclassified, uh, which is actually a for official use only. And that means that you can gain support uh, for it from Esri, but you will need to have you'll need to contact NATO basically in order to get permissions to, to work on that. Um, which is why for D, as, as we, because we do work with the Joint Symbology Panel, which, which releases the APP6B standard, or the APP6 standards. And for D, they've removed that classification marking. And we've also harmonized 2525 Delta and APP6 Delta are very similar standards. So because we've already implemented uh, 2525 Delta, creating an implementation or, or, or incorporating a library for APP6D into ArcGIS Pro, and as a result, the Military Symbol Editor, that will be a relatively low level of effort. So look, so look for that in the future, um, but we're just waiting on that standard to be ratified. Okay, next question is, um, am I able to switch between standards once I've already selected a standard? So going from 2525 Bravo Change 2, if I want to switch that over to uh, 2525 Delta. Good question. So you are able to switch standards, but if you've already added the military overlay schema, uh, the best practice would be to remove that schema uh, and then re-add the schema to the map in Pro. Uh, one example that we have of that is our, our current release of the military overlay template. Um, which is a similar template to the um, to the military symbol editor is that we have two separate maps and two separate file geo databases that house the uh, standards for 2520 or the, sorry the schemas for 2525d and 2525 Bravo change two. Hey, I'm gonna actually, go for it. Yeah, the and the and the documentation for military overlay. Uh, is also on solutions.arcjs.com. And just, just one thing to mention, uh, the workflow for sharing your overlay as an editable feature service and map image service, that's available um, here as well under the share plan as web layer workflow. So back to you, Fred. All right, next question. In regards to the coordinate conversion widget, where there'll be an option to convert from MGRS to closest address? I understand the need for that. Yeah, that's an interesting one. I haven't heard that one before, but that's, again, just comparing two location types. So that's something that could be considered for the future, definitely. Next up, uh, any plans to make Symbol Editor available as a control in runtime SDKs?
So right now we don't, I don't think we have the symbol editor available as a control in the runtime SDK, but we do have the actual stylex files, what the um, the symbol libraries basically. Those are all available and they, those can be ingested into the runtime SDKs so that you can create symbols in those native applications. Um, and if you have more questions about that, we can work with, like Defense Solutions, we work with the runtime team here at Esri on, uh, on implementing that. So if you have more questions, you can let us know. All right, how do we develop 3D symbols? Is there a standard for 3D symbols like 2525? So currently there is an appendix in the 2525 standard for 3D symbols, but it is more of a loose guideline. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't actually get to the point of, of, of best practices. Uh, and, and right now we're currently working with the standards committee for getting that, uh, getting, it, getting it more officially fleshed out into the standard. So the best practice right now for just developing the symbols in, in ArcGIS Pro is to create your overlay in, uh, in either t in, in a 3D scene uh, or, or, or just turn the sample overlay that we have in, in the military overlay template and just convert that into a, into a 3D scene. And then, and then I, would, I would suggest um, experimenting with things like extrusion, uh, Z values, and transparency, and those are all available in the appearance ribbon, which shows up when you start editing these features in a 3D scene. Uh, how do these military tools relate to ArcGIS for runtime, if at all? Would I author a military dictionary in ArcGIS Pro and export to the runtime? So the military tools, um, the military tools as a product does not include uh, any uh, any objects that can be ingested directly into runtime. But what we do have that is related to military symbology are the are the what we call the military symbology styles. It's our basically our source data that includes all of the symbol and label components and the core icons that you can then ingest into runtime and start building these symbols from. You can, yeah, so you can author the dictionary in Pro and then, and then export it to runtime as well. Okay, next question. Yeah, can I plug in the military symbols tool in ArcMap 10.4 and print from there? And the military symbol editor add-in is only supported on ArcGIS Pro right now. But the military overlay schema that supports it uh, is available for uh, ArcMap as well. So uh, if Dan, if I'm correct, you can uh, do some authoring. And if you've got the features already built in, you can at least display them in ArcMap. It's just you don't have the ease of building up those symbols with military symbol editor like you do in Pro. Yeah, to, to build on that, I, I opened up a couple of tabs here. The first one is, is uh, that, I, that I'm showing right now is military features. And for military symbology in ArcMap, this is what I would suggest going to and downloading because it works with a separate renderer from the dictionary renderer. Uh, but it, it gives you the same functionality of being able to customize symbology, add it to the map, and view it in ArcGIS Pro, or sorry, in ArcMap. And then for, for any of the runtime-related questions, this is the link for military symbology styles. Uh, this is, these are the source stylex files that we host and that you can ingest into the runtime SDKs. All right, next question. What is the difference between military symbol editor and military overlay editor, or MOLE? So the military symbol editor is an ArcGIS Pro add-in that that we showed that uh, only only exists for ArcGIS Pro, and MOLE was an was an extension for ArcMap. And in terms of timeline of the software, MOLE existed and uh, has already gone away before the military symbol editor came out. So, so if you want to gain some of, those func some of that functionality back uh, into your workflows, the military symbol editor is, is your best bet for doing that.
All right, uh, next question. Does the military symbol editor support ingesting military standard message transfer formats? So the best practice for military message transfer formats, uh, I would suggest using a combination of the GeoEvent extension and um, the workflow that I showed where you have a published feature service that just has a symbol identification code field. And then you'll be able to read in the symbol identification code from those messages and populate with the proper symbology uh, onto the map in the web. Okay. Next question up. Can I see the SIDC codes when I'm using the military symbol editor? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Can I see the SIDC codes when I'm using the military symbol editor? So the, the, if you want to see the SIDC codes, what you can do is you can go to the domains view of the military overlay schema that works with the military symbol editor. We purposefully put this in, in the background so that uh, if you're not aware or not familiar with editing symbol identification codes, you don't have to learn that. Okay. And then I have a couple more here. Can I save the symbols that I'm previewing in the editor as an image file? Yes, you can. Yeah, you can right-click on those symbol previews and save them out as PNGs. And then, uh, are there any tools to logically aggregate and de-aggregate military symbols as per Zoom level? I think you. Yeah, we don't. We don't currently um, aggregate, aggregate, or or specify symbols based on the Zoom level. Uh, best practice right now would be in the map in ArcGIS Pro. Uh, before you publish anything to the web, looking at setting reference scales and also setting reference scales for a variety of different layers. Um. Can symbols move, animate if there is time associated with units, for example, play in story maps or an engagement, have an engagement? Okay, I want to say for if you have starting times, ending times for each of the feature symbols, you can enable that in ArcGIS Pro and also in ArcMap with the time slider tool, which will allow you to kind of play forward, play back. And also, as Dan mentioned, uh, possibly if you use GeoVent extension, you could give them live updates uh, as well and uh, basically kind of track in real time where symbols are at. Yeah, and, and there's also a time slider widget in, in the web, so I think that you could you could do it in a in a web application. Uh, but I'm not as I'm not as sure about a story map if they if story maps support that. But I think as long as you ingest the web map that has that time enabled, um, that might work. I'm not, I'm not sure though. Okay, we have a few more minutes left for questions. Please type it in now. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, I have one more here. When you create a symbol, does that create a feature template automatically? Not yet, but at our release, well, actually, it does not create a feature template automatically. Uh, and I'm, I'm talking now about our, our military tools for ArcGIS 2.0 release in a couple of weeks. At ArcGIS Pro 2.0, you will be able to click on a button that says export to feature template, uh, something like that. And that will then create the feature template that's associated with that favorite. So it's not automatic, but you will have that control to, to click on that button in the symbol editor. And then you'll look in your, in your manage templates pane and you'll be able to see those feature templates. OK. Well, first, I want to say thank you very much again, uh, Dan and Matt, as well as to everybody who uh, attended the webinar. We appreciate your your, your ability to uh, uh, join us for an hour. Uh, 
for further information, or rather for uh, a re to be able to review the recording and to share with friends and others, uh, coworkers, you can go to www.esri.com slash industries slash defense slash webinars. Um, you want to put that up there, Dan? And uh, we're going to have the, all the webinar recordings up there uh, for as well as on YouTube. You can go see them. Also on YouTube, there's a series of other training uh, videos up there for military tools. So you can see both the webinars as well as the, uh, the tools. We thank you for joining us for this series and hope to and, and check back again and again to this page. We might have an announcement for uh, future webinars that where we dive deeper into specific uh, problems for the analysts. Thank you very much and have a great day.